Hello fine folk, welcome to Console and PC Gaming and today we are going to look at another grand strategy game called Hearts of Iron 4 and Hearts of Iron 4 is based on World War 2 and um, starts in about 1935 I think, a few years before anyway, um, this is a game I've had on my hard drive for a while and played it once or twice and um, what um, one of these games are like are very rewarding if you know how to play them but the problem is they are quite um, a bit of a learning curve I wouldn't say it's difficult it's just you need to go through it so like I said I've only played this a few times but I would like to see if I can give it another go and hopefully um, look at the game from a beginner's point of view like we did with some of the other uh, series we've got on our channel one in particular Stellaris so um, let's go ahead and see what we've got so I've loaded up the game and uh, I've got a couple of basic options here so in my options I've just left most of them at um, default uh, and I, but I have changed this UI scaling because I've noticed in Stellaris um, that you could do this and what this does is basically uh, enlarge the text so sometimes in these type of games when it's uh, in the high res the text is quite small so I'm going to see what that is like um, and I left basically everything else as it is so I'm going to click on back and click on single player and um, it's going to ask me to do a new game or tutorial in fact let's go for the tutorial so click on tutorial Turn that down a bit. So we'll wait a few um, seconds for the graphics to load. And here we go. So if you see the user interface along the top here, it's a little bit larger than it normally is in these games because sometimes it's so small you can't see. And for someone like me who's, uh, <laughs> who's in their late 40s now and uh, my eyesight's not as good as it used to be, it's, it's handy that you, know, that you can see properly. So um, we got uh, Welcome to the Hearts of Iron 4 tutorial. You'll be taking charge of Italy. That's <laughs> that's uh, cool. During the period leading up to the war, reading the tooltips will help you understand things as you play. So it is recommended that you make good use of them. So to select units and provinces, you left click. To move units, you um, right click, and then zoom in and out is uh, the usual middle button or the mouse wheel, and to hold the button to pan the camera. So I'm not sure what it's saying to hold there because uh, well, we'll see anyway. I'll start by dealing with the alerts at the top of the screen, which are going to be, I think, uh, these the alerts. These are the alerts, and um, okay. The only reason I know that is because in EU4 they got similar alerts, and I've also um, looked at some <clears throat> videos a while ago. <clears throat> so I read the beginner's guide on uh, Hearts of Iron 4 wiki, which is okay, but not everyone's got time to do that. So it's always better to have an in-game tutorial. Let's see what this is like, and. Um, so the objectives, it says here, are none of 19 military factories are in use, 9 of 20 civilian factories, none of 11 naval docks, national focus is set, a division is queued for deployment, none of 4 technology research. And so when you look at that, you're saying, yeah, okay, so what's a military factory? So, yeah, I, I'm assuming they build things like guns and stuff. Civilian factories, that's not so straightforward. Well, it, it, could, be, it could be anything. The naval dockyards, I mean, probably um, much more straightforward as well. That's ships. And uh, national focus, maybe not so straightforward. Um, uh, national focus in this game is probably based on a goal they want to achieve. Uh, a division is queued for deployment. Okay, so that's fine. And none of four technology researches. So we obviously need to uh, research technologies. So I click on minimize that. And then, nothing. <laughs> so, so that is the problem. Uh, we have nothing. Um, so uh, it did say. So let's see what this is down here. Okay, uh, that's all we have. Tutorial one of fifteen. So it says one of fifteen. So where's the where's the other pages? That's the number one question I've got. Uh, and if you click on here, it's going to go to. Oh, actually, that's good. So it will actually open this um, uh, in the in the window that we want in the game. And uh, so it says start in the game. Okay. Let's manage cookies, shall we? And oh, we can't even do that. Okay, that's a pain. So okay, so we're going into that that uh, area there where you got a browser to open, which isn't ideal. So let's deal with these things first. Research slot available. So this is oh here we go. This is the research screen. You have a number of research slots that each can research a technology. Click the empty research slot to select something to research. Countries have a different amount of research slots with major powers, usually having more. Um, it is possible to unlock an additional slot through national focuses. So here we go, that's where national focuses come into it. 
National focuses will be covered by another alert and another hint. Okay, so good. That's that's good. So we're going to select the technology. We got um, click to research within 30 days. You can choose a new area to research without loss of research time. So I think um, obviously it looks like it takes time to do the research. And if we do it within 30, 30 days, we can choose a new one and we won't lose any of the time we've spent. So let's click on select research now. Um, let's close this off. So we've got a couple of years here along the top, and we've got a couple of tabs. So um, uh, we have from 1918 to 1946. So looking at this now, you have then have it then goes into three or four different classes for weapons and equipment. So I'm not sure what this is. Oh, that's the year. So weapons and equipment, yeah. and then we've got mobile infantry and special forces. So quite a lot to look at from the start, but. Um, Let's long, long the, look along the tab. So we've got support companies. Uh, they're recon, recon engineers, field hospitals, and the support companies. They're infantry. This is armor. Uh, that's artillery. Uh, land doctrine. So land doctrine, the ways in which your ground forces fight. So um, what they're looking at here is mobile warfare is set on focus on speed and maneuver to cut off and disorganize enemy forces. Then we can choose a doctrine which focuses on throwing shells, not men at the enemy because manpower is precious but it's cheap and the other one grand battle plan extensive plan and preparation before engaging in battle and mass assault doctrine and I think have we got any more along the bottom here yeah we have it's a lot more if you scroll along the bottom there oh yeah so there's a tap okay there's only a, a, a not as many as I thought there naval so we've got the destroyers we've got the cruisers and then you, you, you think to yourself well you know looking at this the what are the difference between all these so uh, obviously, if you mouse over, it's saying that that is uh, a screening vessel's job is to defend larger ships. The cruiser um, uh, is a large arm that is pretty flexible, a good choice for nations who can't afford to build larger capital ships. Um, so what that's, that is, doesn't say what that is. Oh, that's a cruiser, yeah? Battle cruisers. Um, and it doesn't actually tell you what the... Oh, there we go. Yes, it does. Uh, this is a capital ship. So when it's to refer to capital ships here, they're saying in here... Um, if you it, it's a good choice if you can't build these battle cruisers. Battle cruiser is a capital ship. Um, it's got weaker armor, uh, but often offensive abilities close to that of a battleship will weaker um, armor traded for faster speed. So there's all different um, advantages and disadvantages. Naval doctrine is like uh, the, um, the other doctrine we saw earlier, the land. Um, so so th this is a doctrine based on battleships. This is a uh, starving the supply line and this is on carriers we're using uh, aircraft then we've got our air, aircraft um, research and you've got all the various um, aircraft we've got the you know, close air support the fighter the naval bomber and quite self expanding fighters will go, uh, go against bombers close air support I presume are designed to provide support in land battle yep um, these perform tax against enemy ships and then you've got the heavy fighters which have a longer range than I presume the fighters and they're good for both protecting bombers and intercepting enemy bombers. But they're not as agile as regular fighters, so that's why they go heavier, so they're less maneuverable. Tactical bomber, uh, uh, smaller, fast bombers, and can help out ground troops and bombard enemy buildings. And then strategic bombers, which can attack any buildings and infrastructure. So what's the difference between these two is they're small and fast, and they can bomb enemy buildings. And they can also buy enemy builders and infrastructure, but starving them of precious things. And that, it's not really clear what the what the difference is between these two. But um, okay, uh, so that's it. And again, you've got the years here: the 1933, 1936, etc. And then we've got air doctrine, is similar to what we had with the naval and land doctrine, bombing the enemy's factories. Uh, so, so so that will seriously hinder their war machine, which means they won't be able to build a, their um, their aircraft um, by improving our close air support interaction with divisions we can lay waste to enemy divisions uh, with optimal support so that's focused on the close air support fighters which will help the land units and tackle the bombers which can do both ground support and regular bombing and we've got this flashing down here what's that okay oh, yes, this is a tutorial so we've got to do these objectives first so okay so and then we also got engineers. So, like I said, it's quite a lot. So, if we mouse over these, um, it can tell us what it does. It's, it, this enables central range finding. I'm not sure what that means. 
Uh, this um, requires technology, electronic, time to research. What does it actually do? A radio, of course, a radio. Um, that's mechanical computing, which helps you decode codes, probably. Radio detection. So you've got all these, and you've got atomic research, which will lead to the nuclear bomb. Uh, rockets, which will lead to the advanced rocket engines, which you can use, I think, um, in, in ships and things. Sorry, not ships and things, they're planes. Uh, and then uh, here we've got um, radar and encryption, which are obviously part of the computing area and advanced computing. So then we've got that, and then industry, and we've got production, which is important to produce things, and factories, and they've got construction and synthetic oil for fuel, etc., etc., etc. So there's so much stuff here, you see, that is um, to think about. So just bear with me a second. I'm just going to just pause for a second. I'll be back in a few seconds. So, okay, apologies for that. I did nip outside for a second, and so let's minimize. So what are we gonna do here? We've got these research slots. So what I'm thinking straight away is, right, okay, uh, we are, uh, Italy is in an area which is uh, obviously um, got a lot of water around. So we've also got landlocked here to a couple of countries. So my initial impression would be, look, we, we were very vulnerable here in this area. So I would click on, first of all, let's do a, something to do with the, the, with the navel. So I'm going to, um, what have we got here? Uh, that's already researched. Is it researched? So we're going to go, now they're already researched. So we've already got them. So I think uh, I might go on to this. Okay, so we've got, here we're clicking on it and we've got, it's a heavy battleship that would have been launched shortly before the start of the war. Um, they're well armed with the Space 60 and armed with 460 millimeter guns. So um, I think we need to put some of these near um, our country. So I'm going to take a research there. And then I'm going to go here. I'm going to say, um, what have we got here? Okay, another thing I think, if you click on a, a, a time to research ahead of time so in for example what year are we in 1936 so this is 1936 six. so if we go here you see you can research them but you get a penalty apparently so technology is four years ahead of time the more ahead of time it is the bigger the penalty so at this point because we're not in world war one starting 39 so we're not going to really worry about that yet because um we're just sure up our defenses so i'm going to go to naval doctrine as well and uh, I'm going to see, what do we need? Oh, hang on. This is the research tree, although it might seem overwhelming at first, which is what I said, it is actually not too complicated. We have highlighted some technologies that are recommended to research uh, in the beginning of the game. It's a good idea to research technologies that boost your country's industrial base as well as, well as more general military improvements. As the game progresses, it might be valid to research more specialized technologies such as doctrines or aircraft. It all depends what you're trying to achieve. Technologies take longer to research if you are trying to research something ahead of time, which is what we just mentioned, and there are national focuses that can reduce the ahead of time penalty for certain technologies. Okay. So um, I, I want to focus along uh, the lines of a strong battle fleet. So we've got that, and what we're going to do here, uh, convoy sailing. Um, I'm going to go for battle fleet concentration because we've got good organization of 10. Um, but should we go? No, we're going to go for that one. That's my gut feeling. So research. So that's there. And then I'm going to look at... Um, uh, what else can we look at? Uh, uh, they didn't mention this thing about engineering and industrial. Let's go to industry and um, machine tools, which will help us use tools to build other things. And then I'm going to go here and stick, click on engineering. Uh, what does range finding mean? That's what I don't understand. We could go to rockets, but that is 1940. So we could go, I don't know at this point whether we can go for something like um, 
a fighter maybe yeah it's a big fighter that might be help help us to defend against um or oh, should we go for land this is this is this, this is the thing the dilemma you've got uh well i think i'm more likely to not want to lose my my soldiers so i'm going to go for interwar artillery or should i go for anti-tank so if we go for a new anti-tank anti-tank no, research okay so we've done that and click on close so the, the, that's what we've done now for research what is this up here research speed limited exports plus one recruit plus seven percent so i'm not sure what it means by that yet so now we need to go free civilian factories so this is the construction screen so i think you can get through here through one of these buttons as well which is uh construction yeah so and it's used to improve let's move this over here it's used to improve your states and provinces by constructing buildings in the beginning of the game it is suggested you build civilian factories for a couple of years before you start to build military factories um okay or more specialized but building civilian fact you'll be able to construct more buildings in the long term so okay all civilian fact all three civilian factories will be constructing new buildings according to their order in the construction queue civilian factories have been highlighted for your convenience Click it to activate build mode. Where are they? Where are they highlighted? Here? Yes. Okay. Um, click it to activate build mode. When build mode is active, click on the map to queue the construction of the building. Hold shift and click to queue the maximum amount. So, here we are. There's a civilian factory here. Okay. So, um, what is the plan here? Free civilian factory. They're yeah, free. So, Okay, so we've got 10 out of 10. That's 10. Oh yeah, we got this, some civilian factories here. Is it zero or six? Okay, so let's try that one. Uh, what are we going to build here? So what are we going to build? Um, okay. Click it to activate build. Click what? Click the civilian factory on the map. I'm not sure what we're supposed to be clicking here. So there's civilian factories. Um, oh yeah, it's civilian factories. No, it's not. I don't think that's wrong. I think I've done that wrong. Um, I'm all supposed to be building here. Yeah. I'm a bit confused. So, let's read about constructions. So let's see. Oh, is that it? There's coming no text on this page. Oh, okay. So that's helpful, isn't it? Um, so, this is the whole point of a video like this. So you're going to come and stuck at some points. Um, Click, click it to activate build mode. This, this is what's confusing. It says civilian factories have been highlighted for your convenience. Click it to build, activate build mode. Where? Well, I don't know what I'm supposed to be clicking on it. Right, click on it. I'll click on a, click on a map. Click on a state of the map to start the construction. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure what I'm doing here. Okay, let's build one there. Um, what are these slots? Okay. I've got ten slots there. So does that mean we got one of six? Okay. I don't think we can build anymore, can we? Okay, I'm not quite sure exactly what I'm doing here. <laughs> but I'm, it says I'm in Tuscany and I'm building... Um, uh, click, to, click to build a civilian factory, right, okay. Um, and then click to build a civilian factory. Oh, I can't do that, can't do that. Okay.
Hmm, all right, okay. So now it says free military factory. So this is the production line screen. Production lines produce the equipment needed for your war effort. Um, it is recommended that you produce both the equipment you need now and that you might need in the future. There are two types of military production lines, uh, production lines, military and naval. The first with the green bit uses is a military factory and the latter uses the blue naval dockyards. The more factories are assigned to a production line, the faster it will produce the equipment you need. Um, as production lines can be created by clicking one of the four highlighted buttons to the left. Whip four, oh yes. Um, once you select an equipment type from one of those four categories, a production line will be created for that equipment. Read the next page of this hint to search the recommendation what to produce and how many factories to assign to each production line. Okay, with the image below, with the image below, you can see an example of a production line with 10 military factories assigned to it. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So you remember the green is military factories. And this, I'm not sure what it is yet. We recommend that you create production lines for support equipment, artillery, BA-65, and uh, that. Okay. So, uh, that's all well and good, but what do we click to do this? Uh, military factories. Okay, build inventory, build armored vehicles, build aircraft. So, if I click on here, uh, I'm going to build what it wants me to build. Uh, weapons. Oh no, support equipment. So, okay, we want four factories to build support equipment. Okay. And then we go to artillery and we click on which one do we need? This one. And we want three factories assigned to that. Okay. Then the a plane, BA 65. Where's that? Um, right, BA 65. And we have two factories assigned to that. And then the Mastrale class, so we click on the Naval Dockyard, and uh, where's the Mastrale class, that one there, and we get 10 Naval Dockyards. Okay, so, um, so let's just get our heads around this. Uh, how do we know how many military factories are available, first of all? So I know we assign them, so here we got, um, uh, where is it? I'm not quite sure here. Yeah. I just wanted to see how many military factories we have available to build these things. Two divisions, no. Okay, we'll go back to that, but that's another question I'd like to ask. We still got that up here. Three dockyards. Um, okay. <laughs> so we've got 20, 20, oh yeah, we've got 20 of 20 civilian factories, 9 of 19. So perhaps we need to use some more nine, um, factories. But that's what my point is. I wanted to find out how many we got available. So, oh, 9 of 19. So we've got another 10. So what I'm going to do, I think, is uh, do some tanks. And do two, three, five, and um, let's do military equipment and do some. We've got guns on there, yeah, we need some guns as well. So I'm gonna go for some guns, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's disappeared. Now we've got three dockyards, so I'm gonna go here and uh, convoy. Now let's do a convoy it's used for international trade of goods and resources and to ferry troops around. So I think we might need a convoy. Uh, and how many have we got dockyards 11 of 11 so that's done no national focus so let's set a national focus guys so so far it's fitting together still 100 percent sure of the uh, civilian factories so um, now that we've done that this is the national focus screen which allows your country to select its political goals which will result in effects or bonuses that help the game's progress we have highlighted highlighted a couple of national focuses for your convenience that we recommend that you start with the reason this path is recommended is because it allows you to gain another research slot as quickly as possible, which will allow you to re research one more technology uh, simultaneously. So, okay, so I'm, I'm, I agree that we're going to go to industrial effort. So let's set that. Requires Ethiopian war logistics. Okay, so we can't do that. We have to do this one. So in uh, in the war, in Italy had uh, Ethiopia, I think, 
and it allows us to build three naval bases in, in Ethiopia um, and two infrastructure which will ha be handy so I'm gonna say click start right so that's done so we've got now if you look down here oh, oh, no I don't want to go there so Italy um, in Ethiopia here and now that will help us build um, some bases by here because I think we're quite cut off there from from the main mainland, so we need to do, have something to to do to get down here. Something, some sort of supply line, I think. Anyway, so no divisions in basic training. So that's the next bit. Our our divisions. Uh, this is the recruit and deploy. Where did we go? Recruit and deploy uh, screen, and this is where you queue new divisions for training and later on deployment. We recommend that you add a division di fanteria. Uh, Divisione di Fanteria Division to the queue. Divisions in training will first attempt to gather the equipment they require, which is what we were building earlier on. Once they have the equipment, they will begin their training. Training progress can never exceed equipment progress. Training progress can never exceed equipment progress. Click the train button to add a division for training. Once divisions have completed the training, they can be deployed to the location of your choice. You may only deploy divisions in your core territory. So, um, first of all, we have to add a division defend area. So, let's um, train that. Okay. Uh, good. Now that you can start dividing. Uh, what's that meant? Good. Now that you learn, so let's go back to this one. This is the crew recruit and deploy a screen. Yeah, we've done that. Divisions and train will first attempt to gather the equipment they require. Click the train button uh, to add a division for training. Once the divisions have completed their training, they can be deployed to a location of your choice. So, um, click on location. And um, in my core territory. So, let's see where, where can we deploy this. Um, I'm not sure. It didn't tell us where to deploy them. So, what does it mean by core territory? Okay, so you're saying click a deploy. So I'm going to deploy them, I think, up um, here. Okay, so they're going to go to Abruzzo. That's a region I've just clicked on. So if I zoom in, you'll see that probably that's Abruzzo. Anyway, was it brute? So it's there somewhere. Okay, so we've done that. Uh, click next page. Divisions can be uh, produced serially or in parallel. Divisions that are trained in parallel will gain equipment at the same rate, so they will be finished at roughly the same time. When a division has all the equipment they need and are fully trained, they will be deployed to the location you've chosen. Click add unit to add another division for parallel training. Okay, add unit. So we've got two divisions, so it's that button, not that one. Um, if the tides of war turn against you, you may be vital to deploy your divisions before they have all the equipment. This should be avoided when uh, you can, where you can. So, so we've got two, uh, not enough manpower or equipment training, uh, okay, equipment needed. So we, they look, they haven't got any equipment, so we're building that equipment. Um, well, we go back towards that, towards that anyway. So, good news. Now the alerts are sorted out, you can start dividing, diving into the details of waging war. Italy starts at war with Ethiopia, and you should not have much difficulty in winning that war once you learn how to do it. Move your camera in a southeast direction until you find er Eritrea. Okay. Let's close this window, I think. Okay. So let's find Eritrea. And that's, uh, that's Eritrea here. Okay. Oh. I left this one out, didn't I? Let's just go construction again. Okay, so we've done that. So um, we're going to press pause at this point because we're going to do the next part of the tutorial, which is page two, and uh, we'll be back with the next episode. So um, 
I hope this has been of some use to you guys. If not, um, let, let us know any suggestions and we'll try to include them in the, in the upcoming episodes. So we'll be back with episode two to start after the next part of the tutorial. Until then, goodbye guys.